Should you buy a Quest 3? Hopefully today's video will help you answer that question. Hey, what's up? I'm Matt and welcome to BMF VR, the unofficial home for all things Quest. Today we're talking Quest 3 again and should you buy a Quest 3? Three. Whether you're upgrading from a Quest 2 to a Quest 3 or you're looking for your first VR headset, should you be buying that Quest 3? Today I have three reasons why you should buy a Quest 3 and then later in the video, three reasons why you shouldn't. Let's get started right now. First up, let's talk size. Everyone knows that size matters, right? Well, that's especially true when it comes to VR headsets. The Quest 2, well, an awesome headset was definitely very front heavy and bulky, causing discomfort in a lot of people and the need for something to counterbalance the headset. Well, the Quest 3 is approximately 40% slimmer than the Quest 2. So in that regard, it is definitely better to get a Quest 3 than a Quest 2. Now, keep in mind the weight is approximately the same, but that balance is actually considerably better because it's closer to your face and it's just better balanced overall. Add in a new strap to this puppy and I bet it'll be extremely comfortable. Having used headsets that are smaller than the Quest 2 and the weight is distributed better, I definitely think that this could be one of the biggest deciding factors in whether you should buy a Quest 3 or a Quest 2. Weight distribution is key in VR headsets, and since we can't have glasses style VR headsets just yet, this is at least going in the right direction. That headset sits so much closer to your face that you're not gonna feel like your head is going to tip forward and smash into the ground if you look down. Speaking of being closer to your face, the number two reason why you should buy a Quest 3 is the pancake lenses. One of the reasons that it can actually sit so close to your face and can be so much slimmer is these pancake optics. So what is a pancake lens? Without going too much into technical terms, a Fresnel lens requires more room between the lens and the screen to do the same thing. Essentially, a pancake lenses are like folded lenses that allow the image of the screen to bounce around between the thin lens stack, requiring less room between the screen and the optics. That's like a super dumbed down explanation that probably isn't right, but that's what we're gonna go with. One of the huge benefits of pancake lenses is unlike a Fresnel lens, you don't have a center sweet spot. So a Fresnel lens, if you've ever used a Quest 2 or other Fresnel lens headsets, you'll notice that the center of the lens is a sweet spot where you can see everything clearly. If your eyes get outside of that sweet spot, you'll start to see some distortion and some blurriness. That's because a Fresnel lens is clear in the center and either concave or convex, whatever the right term is, as it gets closer to the edges of the lens, making it so that there's distortion. This can lead to headaches and the annoyance of not being able to find just the right sweet spot if the headset isn't exactly where it needs to be. But pancake lenses do not do that. They do get a little bit less sharp around the edges, but it's a much wider sweet spot. And even if you're looking at the edges of the lens, it's considerably clearer, like massively clearer than the edges of a Fresnel lens to the point where you don't even have to have your IPD exactly dialed in to have a good experience, meaning that the IPD range of the Quest 3 is gonna be a lot wider than the Quest 2. IPD is the interpupillary <laughs> distance which is the distance between the pupils of your eyes. With Quest 2, you only had three steps of IPD, and with the Fresnel lenses, it made it even harder to get to the right exact spot and get a perfect experience. Quest 3 looks to have stepless IPD adjustment and the pancake lenses, so a lot more people should be able to easily enjoy the experience on the Quest 3. So that's number two. Number three, this one's a big one, more power. That's right, just like in Home Improvement, we get more power. Two times the amount of power, actually two and a half times, depending on who you talk to or what you're reading. This is the new chipset that is the next generation of the Quest 2's XR2 chipset that adds in at least twice as much power for the Quest 3. Now this is going to be a huge factor. We're gonna talk about in the next section, the negatives of why you shouldn't buy it. One thing that might come into play with this more power, but Let's just talk about the power to begin with. This is going to allow developers to do considerably more in their worlds, depending on how they go about doing it and what they decide to use it for. I actually asked on Twitter the other day if there were developers that were specifically planning on using the power of the Quest 3 to upgrade their experiences, and I got a lot of really interesting comments and people saying, heck yes, we're updating, but specifically a couple of the interesting things that were said were from developers like Load, the developers behind the Aspire series, Specifically saying, yep, we'll be taking advantage of as much as we can. We'll have a free update that offers a mixed reality game mode, which we've talked about on the channel in the past, plus visual uplift to the game, bringing atmospheric lighting effects, more particles, 
more detailed materials and higher resolution textures. That alone gets me excited about the additional power of the Quest, just that list of little things that they want to try to update. There were several other developers saying that they were going to be using the new power as well, including the developers of Breachers and Richie's Plank Experience, all of which will be amazing to see what they do with this new power. But it comes down to the fact that this new power makes this headset a next generation above the Quest 2, which is absolutely awesome, and it really could mean huge things for the future of Quest platform games. Now, before we move on to the why you shouldn't buy the Quest 3, here's a quick bonus one for you. Higher resolution displays. Now, this hasn't been really talked about a lot, I don't believe, but between the pancake lenses and these new higher resolution displays, it's going to be a lot crisper and clearer. This is actually going to be a higher res than both the Quest 2 and the Quest Pro from a display standpoint. It's not going to have the local dimming that the Quest Pro has. It will be higher resolution. So as a little bonus add-on, the fourth one, higher resolution displays, means an even better and clearer experience on the Quest 3. Now, why shouldn't you buy the Quest 3? Well, the most obvious answer to start off with is price. Now, this price is $4.99. It's the most expensive consumer gaming quest that they've released yet with the quest one originally starting at 399 and then the quest two releasing for 299 before its price went up and then back now to 299 499 is a lot i get it for a quest headset i think it's worth the price for the right people but you do have to keep a couple things in mind when it comes to price number one 499 is the base model price which means you're getting 128 gigabytes of storage according to what we've been hearing from meta now asgard's wrath 2 is somewhere around 25 to 30 gigabytes in size installed approximately that's a lot of space that would allow you to put approximately like five games of that size on your Quest 3 with 128 gigabyte storage size. That is just something to keep in mind. Now, there's not a lot of games that are that size yet, but hopefully we'll be getting bigger experiences like that. And that would just mean that you're going to have to install and delete as you need to to play these bigger games. 128 gigabyte base model. We don't know the price of the next step up for more storage, but keep in mind that is the case. $499 for 128 to start with. And also keep in mind that $4.99 base price is getting you the base model. That's no comfort add-ons. You're going to get the base facial interface. You're going to get the base strap. And for me, at least with the Quest 2, at $2.99, it was a great price because you needed to upgrade those things. So I have not tried the Quest 3, obviously, yet. Hopefully, the strap is better, but it's still a soft strap. Personally, I would much prefer have something like an Elite Strap or a Bobo Strap or a Kiwi Strap that's either battery powered to make the experience longer or at the very least more plastic to it so it actually supports the headset better. So you got to add that price in and you got to add in the price of a facial interface if you're going to swap the facial interface out. The Quest 2's facial interface was horrific and I hate the original Quest 2 facial interface. Who knows what this one's going to be like? Hopefully it's better. But if it's not, that's another cost you've got to add on to it. And then if you wear glasses, if you don't want to wear glasses inside of the headset, then you're going to have to add on the attachments to put on the lenses, which probably won't work from the Quest 2 if you're upgrading. So you see where I'm going with this. $4.99 is the starting price. So if you've got additional add-ons that can add on to it, you could be spending $600 if you need all these different things for the headset, not $500, which might be worth it to you, but that's just something to keep in mind. And I view that as a reason not to buy it if you don't have the funds to do that. Number two, and this is more speculation than anything else, but more than likely the Quest 3 is not going to utilize all of its power to the top of its ability right away because it's going to be held back by the Quest Two, most developers are going to want to hit that entire market unless they're being incentivized by Meta to just release a Quest 3 game, which I don't see happening right away. So they're going to have to develop for both Quest 2 and Quest 3, which is great because both platforms get it. But most of what you're going to get on Quest 3 is just enhancements of the Quest 2 game, not a game that just takes full advantage of everything the Quest 3 has to offer, at least initially. So at least for the time being, once Quest 3 launches, my guess is that we're going to see upgrades to the games that are going to come out for both Quest 2 and Quest 3, but nothing Quest 3 specific as of yet. Now, I could be wrong, but that is my assumption, and that's just another reason that maybe you don't necessarily want to buy it right away. You might want to upgrade later if either the price drops or there's specific games that come to it because 
you're happy with your Quest 2. There's not necessarily any reason to upgrade for additional games unless you really care about that higher resolution display and the pancake optics and the better weight distribution. Number three, the focus on mixed reality. Now this for me is not a negative, but I've seen a lot of people that don't really like the idea that Meta is focusing a lot on mixed reality with this device. Now this does kind of affect the Quest 2 as well, but not as much because the Quest 3 is being really based on their Meta reality. So they're gonna be doing a lot of mixed reality stuff for the Quest 3. Does that mean they're not going to focus as heavily on utilizing full power for the Quest 3? They're going to focus more on mixed reality? Remains to be seen. For me, I'm really excited about mixed reality stuff like the Aspire 2 MR missions that we've talked about a few times. But there are a lot of people that just don't care about mixed reality. Is the Quest 3 going to be weighed down by the mixed reality experience? Is it going to be focused half on VR and half on mixed reality? I don't think so, but that is something people are worried about. So I added it to the list as a negative in the sense that it might be something to wait and see before jumping out and buying a Quest 3, whether it's going to be more heavily focused on mixed reality or in equal parts mixed reality and VR or whatever. Now, last up, here's a bonus reason not to buy it. For some people, no eye tracking. I've seen this comment several times from people. Some people would actually rather pay more for the Quest 3 if it had eye tracking, which I totally understand eye tracking is a great feature. You have it in PSVR 2, the new Apple headset's gonna have it, the Quest Pro has it, and when it's utilized, it works interestingly. Like, it actually does do some really cool stuff when it's utilized in the Quest Pro. Unfortunately, most developers just aren't utilizing it because there's no incentive to. The vast majority of people playing the games are on Quest 2 that does not have eye tracking. If Quest 3 would have had eye tracking, that would have been a different story and probably would have been used a lot more, but they chose not to add eye tracking to the Quest 3. So that's one reason. If you're looking for social input with eye tracking or face tracking, it's not on Quest 3. Or if you're massively disappointed that they aren't going to be able to utilize the power of the Quest 3 and eye tracked foveated rendering, which really would have done a huge job for making visuals even better, then I understand, unfortunately, it's what it is. Maybe the next iteration will have both and things will cost less, so it'll be about the same price. Who knows? But those are my three and a bonus reasons not to get a Quest 3. What do you think, though? Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are. Are you buying a Quest 3? Do you plan to look at it after it releases and see what the reviews are, if it's worth upgrading, or are you just going to stick with your Quest 2 because it's already a great headset? Let me know down in the comments what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to keep up to date on all things Quest. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and happy questing.